welcome to another episode of Nerd Tween Predictions, Nerd Tween Wrestling here on Junkie, the best place for the new social media collecting platform. It's going to be awesome. We are going to be killing it. Um, but we are going to be talking about WWE Survivor Series War Games. Uh, this is going to be a very interesting um card uh as you can see my record is 13 and 6 right now not doing too hot let's see if i can nail all of these predictions uh and maybe get this record a little bit higher than it has been recently uh, the last few pay-per-views have really uh both aew and uh, wwe have been kicking my butt so let's see if we can do better today uh let's i don't have i can't seem to find a ever the match order like when they're going on so i'm gonna i'm kind of trying to predict how i would do it so first up we're gonna talk about the ladies women's survivor series war games match we have damage control featuring bailey asuka eo sky and not Dakota Kai. We have Kyrie Sane because Dakota Kai is still injured. Uh, then on the women and the the good guy side, we have Becky Lynch, the man. We also have Bianca and Charlotte Flair and Shotzi for whatever reason. Um, I love Shotzi, but I don't think this is gonna do uh, very well for her character. Um, she is. Unless you know she's impressed a lot of people in the background, backstage, um, and they think she can be the like next level, um, I I don't see that personally. Um, I think she's a solid mid carder and she could do very well. Um, but this, I I am hoping it's because she's gonna do a crazy spot that the other like good girls won't do. Um. Uh, but I don't know, man. This is this is an interesting match. I feel like we're going to get uh, a Bailey face turn <clears throat> coming up very soon, and I think this might be the little push uh, towards that. Um, I, I feel like Kyrie Sane, Asuka, and Io Sky are going to kick both. It, it, it definitely going to kick Bailey out, but they might even kick um, Dakota Kai out because she I mean she's can't wrestle. You know what I mean? And I mean, it's possible that uh, when Dakota comes back, EO still is like, she's my tag team partner. We're good. And she's part of damage control. But Bailey's on her way out. Uh, and it's, it's, it's a shame because it looks like they're doing that with almost every one of their um, f uh, factions at this point. Um, like Bailey going to get kicked out of damage control. We're going to see Damian Priest probably soon leave uh, the Judgment Day. Uh, and you know, the, we just had, uh, Jay leave the bloodline. Um, it just seems like that's kind of just how they do factions. Um, and we'll see what happens, but, um, I'm going to, I'm going to go with the, the baby faces win the good, the, 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 the heels get their comeuppance. Uh, but it's going to be blamed on Bailey, and we will probably see on Raw Monday night her getting kicked out of damage control. Uh, but I don't see you have a team with the man Becky Lynch, Bianca Belair, and the arguably the greatest women's champion of all time, Charlotte Flair. I don't see them losing um, even with the stack deck like this. And we don't know who has the advantage. You can still uh, vote for that um, through Ruffles. They are giving – you get actually get a chance to um, vote on it. Uh, so you can go do that now up until the kickoff show, uh, which will be at 7. Man, I'm glitching. <laughs> um, it's because I'm wearing my NWO shirt because it's black and the – you know, it just washes me out with the black – you know what I might need to do? I might need to put, like, lights on here or something, you know, just to, like, make different because, like, I kind of get washed out. So I raise my hands. So, uh, what do I do with my hands? <laughs> All right. So, yeah, we, we have um, Charlotte Flair, Bianca Belair, the man Becky Lynch, and Shotzi winning um, and look for it to be blamed, the loss blamed on on. On Bailey, excuse me, I had to, my brain to stop working there for a second. Um, blame it on Bailey, but let's 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 move right along. So we've so we've got the good the the good girls winning this one. All right, next up we have for the Intercontinental Championship, 
the ring general, Gunther, versus the A-list star, The Miz, for the Intercontinental Championship. Ah, uh, this is this one. Um, is crazy. Um, I I honestly don't know. Um, what's happening here? Um, I I want I I want to say that Gunther's gonna lose to the Miz. Uh, the reason why I say that is because well, a that the Miz they've turned him babyface, and you're not gonna turn him babyface and then have him lose to Gunther after turning him face. That makes no sense. Um, but also because he is. Um, one of the the most uh, acclaimed of all of the Intercontinental Champions. I think he has the most reigns as Intercontinental Champion, if I'm not mistaken. And he's also a two time um, Grand Slam. He's he's won every everything. And Gunther has the longest reign of all Intercontinental Championships. I also think that it's very close to the time where we start pushing Gunther into the main event. Because uh, if anyone on the entire roster not named Cody Rhodes or let's just say Seth Rollins because of their past uh, um, history, who else besides Gunther looks like someone who can actually take down Roman? Like, I would bet that Gunther, with his goons, could easily counteract what they have now uh, with the bloodline with Jimmy and Solo alone uh, and Gunther physically I mean he's destroyed everyone like there's not a superstar on the roster that is worthy of mid Carter higher that has not attempted base at this point to take the Intercontinental Championship from him and they've all been sent packing and I don't think this is any different um, this one because if you look at the entire card, if there's any title that's on the line that could potentially do it, it would be here. Um, but I also have a feeling they might add a um, the Women's Tag Team Championship on the pre-show. This is just my feeling. I haven't heard any rumors like that, but I just got a feeling uh, that that might, might happen. But this title is the only one that you look at and go, all right, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe they can beat Gunther um I I don't I mean it's gonna be crazy if they do I'm gonna because I don't think that they have a pay-per-view a premium live event where no titles change hands um and I don't see Zoe Stark beating um Rhea Ripley which we'll get that in a bit but that's the only other title match that I can think of off the top of my head that's even on here because Roman's not there Seth is in the um the war games, the U S titles not online. Cause Rome, cause uh, what's his name? Uh, Logan Paul's not here. So yeah, I mean, th- I mean the tag titles aren't on the line cause they're in the war games match. So yeah, that's it's, it's, this is the only one where you can look and go, man, maybe, maybe they do have the Miz win. Um, I'm going to hedge my bets. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to go with the odds here. The Miz defeats, Gunther and becomes the new intercontinental champion. And I will say that it'll probably be Giovanni Vinci. Uh, not, no, no. Uh, Ludwig Kaiser that costs the ring general, the championship, uh, to further push that story along. At least that's how I would book it. But yeah, I, I think, I think the Miz takes this because this is the last pay-per-view uh, premium live event until the Royal Rumble. I, I see I see him winning the Royal Rumble and and go and challenging um, against Seth for the um, or whoever has the world heavyweight title on on Raw. That's what's gonna happen. And then you have Cody. So that that'll probably be the main event for night one. And Cody versus Roman will be night two of WrestleMania. That's probably what we're gonna see. Um, so yeah, and and the other thing, little 
thought process here is if you didn't know, Gunther has a visa issue where he has to stay in the United States up to the next six months. So all the pay-per-views that appealees that are coming up after uh, the Royal Rumble, there are a lot of them are out of the country. So the Intercontinental Championship can't be defended there. So I, I could definitely see them also doing that. Uh, in order to get the Intercontinental belt onto someone who can actually defend it um, in these premium live events that they have next year go- that are going to be around the world. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go. I'm, I-, I could be wrong here. I wouldn't be surprised if Gunther wins. Um, look for it to be a fantastic match. I don't think this will be a squash in any way, shape, or form. Uh, but uh, yeah, I definitely think that this might be the time. Um, I don't know if Miz is the right one to take it off him, to be honest. Um, I- I- I could- I'm okay with it. You know, I'm not uh, I'm not saying he shouldn't be able to do it, but I think someone uh, like in the vein of like maybe a Jay Uso um, could have been a nice or Chad Gable would have been another great person to take it off him. Hell, even Shinsuke Nakamura, um, you're not going to give him the, the heavyweight title. Let him go after the IC title. He could rock that and 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 do really well with that as like this evil guy holding the IC title. Yeah, that'd be, I mean, it's Gunther, but instead of it being a big, uh, uh, I think he's Austrian, uh, guy, <laughs> you have, uh, Nakamura, uh, anime villain. And uh, he's, ba- he's literally turned himself into anime villain. And it's so freaking awesome. I love him so much. Um, but and that's odd that he's not on this pay-per-view. I'm hoping, uh, premium, premium live event. I do hope though, that, um, he helps them, uh, push some of these younger talents that for whatever reason, they don't want to like skyrocket to the moon, like some other companies. Um, but he's doing a really good job, uh, with all of his feuds recently. So, but yeah, let's, let's, let's go with the Miz defeating Gunther, ending his illustrious long title reign and becoming the new intercontinental champion. Could be wrong. (laughs) All right. Next up we've got for the women's, Heavyweight Championship, we have the Eradicator, Rhea Ripley, versus Zoe Stark. Let's talk about the rise of Zoe Stark for a second here, because Zoe Stark was supposed to be the next big thing a few years ago before a tragic knee injury. Like, her whole knee just got, like, destroyed. Um, But now here she is. She was in a nice little team up with Trish Stratus, becoming this heel and 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 just her little lackey and, and helping fight the man Becky Lynch. And then now you hear see her here where she's more of a baby face. While she's still a badass and, and will, you know, mess people up, you know, she's kind of like Shayna, where you look at her and go, man, she might do some heel things, but that's definitely a baby face. So to have her go up against the Eradicator, the arguably the biggest uh, 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 heel on the women's side in the business, or well, at least in WWE, this is a very nice matchup. I, I'm look their their styles uh, very well um, match each other. Well, I need to need to wet my whistle here. Okay, so. Yeah, I, this is going to be an interesting match. Um, look for Zoe Stark to look fantastic in defeat. Uh, but there is no way that Rhea Ripley is not walking out of Survivor Series as the still women's champion. Look for Dominic Mysterio to interfere in the match in both this and probably in the War Games match because there's no rules. There's nothing stopping him from climbing over the ring after the entire um, team is already in the ring. There's nothing that's going to stop him from doing that. We can even walk in the door. I mean, they do chain it, but Dominic Mysterio. And you know what? I bet you Rio Ripley gets involved, too. But definitely Dominic Mysterio is getting involved in, in that uh, War Games match that we'll talk about in a little bit. But, yeah, this one, Rio Ripley all the way. Uh, if they, if they ha- somehow... If they take the title off her here with Zoe Stark, I would not. I would not be upset at all. Um, I, I like what they're doing with Zoe Stark, and she looks very good um, in the ring. Like she's very talented, and some of the offense she does, you don't think she should be able to, but she's knocking it out the park. So she'd be a great women's champion. I just don't see them taking the belt off of Rhea Ripley here. It, Rhea Ripley is gonna hold that belt. Um, 
hopefully until, uh, I mean, if you would think, at least till WrestleMania, uh, where it could be a big spectacle. Um, but we'll see what happens there. Um, it would be a nice. This is the only match that I can, I'm can. i looking at going, I could be wrong here because they're going to do it. I feel like there has to be one title change. Um, so if I'm wrong with Gunther, watch for this to also be wrong because I they're going to have Zoe uh, somehow beat Rhea Ripley. Uh, but I'm going to stick with my original pick here. Like I said, we're going to go with Rhea Ripley retains her women's heavyweight championship. Next up. We have, so now this match is interesting because initially it was supposed to be uh, Carlito versus uh, Santos Escobar, but Santos Escobar injured Carlito last night on SmackDown. So we now have Dragon Lee stepping up and saying he's going to beat some, uh, some respect into him. Now this is, this match, I would bet, is going to be, Probably the match of the night. Um, in terms of entertainment value, yes, of course, the War Games match is going to be great. Um, but we know it's a War Games match. This is just a regular match that's going to tell a great story. Um, and uh, Rey Mysterio has coined Dragon Lee as the future of Lucha Libre. Uh, and that was before he even came to the WWE. Uh, and with Santos Escobar being so... Um, Say, Damien, he said, said freaking Dominic Mysterio was right. I'm sorry. That statement alone almost makes you sound dumb. Uh, but, I mean, he sees Ray as someone who betrayed him. So uh, look for him to be exceptionally violent. A lot of people don't know his time in NXT. He was a fantastic heel. And the two, two of the members of the, the LWO were part of his crew. Um, when they were heels. So I look for this to start a, almost a, um, civil war in the LWO, uh, because he's going to have, he's going to start his own LWO and, and maybe even get, uh, Cruz del Toro. And I can't remember his, the other guy's name, um, over onto his side. Um, or you can see the, the two Umberto and, uh, Angel, uh, from NXT joining his side. Cause they're mon, they're, they're mean heels. Um, I could definitely see that. Uh, and then Dragon Lee falls in line with the LWO. Maybe not so much as a part of the LWO, but with the LWO because he's a good guy through and through. Um, I I love this match. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be um, up front. I think this, like I said, besides the War Games match, which is, of course, we know is a War Games match, is going to be fantastic. Um, I, I, I see it, this being probably one of the matches of the night. Um Look for Santos Escobar to cheat his way to a victory, but after a phenomenal match. Uh, like I said, don't be surprised if you see a heel turn for uh, Cruz and um, his tag team partner, which I unfortunately am drawing a blank on. I feel bad. Um, but I've, I've got Santos Escobar winning this, but Dragon Lee is going to look amazing in defeat because uh, because Santos is going to embrace his super heel that he's becoming uh, once again and uh, take the victory through treacher treacherous means. And last up is the Men's Survivor Series 5-on-5 five five War Games match. Now, this match is going to go one of two ways. Either the... Um, Oh, wait, Dominic is in this. I don't know why I thought that he wasn't. Wow. <laughs> I, I I said earlier in the in, in the episode that, that he's going to find his way in there. No, he's already in it. All right, so the inclusion of Randy Orton makes this very intriguing because I don't see Randy Orton being okay working with Jay. Um, He's also had issues with uh, Seth Rollins and definitely has been betrayed and hurt and uh, probably has beef with Cody Rhodes. So while I don't see Randy Orton joining the Judgment Day, he could be the catalyst that gets uh, uh, Damian Priest out of the Judgment Day. Because if you notice, the only one who actually talks shit to him in that little promo was Damian Priest, and Damian Priest is the leader for the match, right? So if they lose, 
he's going to be the one everyone looks at as to blame, and then he's not going to like that, and he's going to peace out. That's definitely something that could happen. Um, and look for look for a turn from Randy Orton. I don't see him being a baby face. I, I don't – without a – someone to bounce off of like a Matt Riddle who's no longer there. Maybe they do that with Sammy. Um, but the one thing I, I, I can almost guarantee is that Randy Orton is not going to be okay with Jay. When Randy Orton was last in the WWE, I don't even think the judgment day was even a thing. <laughs> Why does he have beef with anybody else except for his teammates? He's going to be the last one in and look for him to betray the good guys um, because I don't think you can make, I don't think the judgment day can lose and them still look strong. So the only way, and you don't want to give the, these baby faces that you built up all this, like we are looking at Sami Zayn, Seth Rollins, the, the heavyweight champion, Cody Rhodes, who the, hopefully will be challenging Roman Reigns sometime down the line. You know, you look at those people and you're going to, and, and then you add Randy Orton and Jey Uso. How are you going to, how is either one of these teams going to take a loss? The only way is for Rand, the only way for it to work all the way around is to have Randy Orton, everyone working together. They beat up the Judgment Day and then Randy Orton, RKO, Jay. Slow turn, Cody Rhodes, RKO. Seth Rollins and Sammy are staring. They don't know what's going on. And then maybe let's say, let's say uh, Drew pins J one, two, three. With Seth Rollins and Sami Zayn looking at at an intense uh, apex predator after he just cost them the match. Because is Randy Orton going to come back and lose his first match? I don't think so. But if he does, it's because he made sure that his team lost and he was actually working with the winning side. I think that's the only way that everyone in this situation comes out looking good. Because if the Judgment Day loses and they keep, you know, Randy Orton works with, I mean, it, it, it's a discredit to Randy's character. I think he he's going to get his revenge on Jay. He's going to get his revenge on uh, all the Usos and Roman Reigns. He's got more in common with Drew McIntyre than any one of his current team so if he comes back and doesn't whoop Jay's ass I don't know how I feel about that now unless there's a spot early where he's talking to him and like listen tonight we go to war against them but you're my next one I'm coming after you next I hate them more than I hate you right now which would make no sense like this makes like I'm sorry Jay is the the quote unquote reason that Randy Orton's been out of action for almost two years. Or is it over two years at this point? You know, so I, I don't see the Apex Predator, the one who hears voices in his head, not listening to those voices and RKOing uh, uh Jay into oblivion. I just don't see it. And I, I definitely can see a Randy Orton, Cody Rhodes feud that will be another one of the those legends that he conquers on his way back to Roman. You know, like, I, I just don't see... Yeah, I, I, I got the Judgment Day winning this. Um, and probably due to a Randy Orton heel turn. Um, I, I don't see any other way that this comes out. Because... Unless they're they're starting to tone down how powerful the Judgment Day is after they just showed their strength both Monday and on Friday, as they keep doing, I mean you're gonna uh, you're not gonna take the belt off of Rhea. Dominic doesn't is, is NXT, so none of these stars are in that chase. You've got the tag team titles that the the Judgment Day have continuously defended and won. Uh, they even got their titles back from Cody and, and Jay shortly after losing them. Uh, I mean, the only person of Judgment Day who's not, like, 
a powerful individual is JD McDonough. I mean, it's ridiculous. Like I, 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 if you go in and try to, if the Judgment Day win, they look great still. They look powerful. But if they lose, then they're gonna have to spend the next few weeks on Raw and SmackDown building them back up again. Like if if they're this this unstoppable team that they've been talked about as being and have been booked as being, and then they lose in War Games, in the Cell. Unless it's it's to make it so that uh, Damian Priest can get kicked out of the group, like th- that's the only thing that can come from a, a Judgment Day loss. Um, and I think as long as the the baby faces whoop up on the Judgment Day and it's because of a heel turn by Randy Orton, I think that's the only real way that we'll all be satisfied that it was a good match. I mean, even if if because if if the good guys win, it, it's it sends the wrong message about the Judgment Day. The Judgment Day are not supposed to look weak. In the, like, you know what I mean? They're supposed to be this big, powerful, bad guy faction. And you've got them losing to people who don't even like each other. And, you know what I mean? Like, they have no cohesion when you're a unit. Like, it just makes no sense. Um, so I, I got the Judgment Day winning here. Um, and probably due to a... Uh, Randy Orton turn. I know everyone's saying it. I, I got it. I think I'm going to jump on the bandwagon too. I've been, I've been second. I heard Randy. I was like, but that makes no sense. Like he, he is more uh, aligned himself with a judgment day than anyone on his team. Like it doesn't make any sense to me, but we'll see what happens. I mean, that place is going to erupt uh, when Randy comes out um, because they're locked in a little cage. Maybe he does. Maybe it's like drama. Like Randy said he was coming, but then he doesn't show up, and then he comes and saves the day. Maybe that's like the only way I can see, because that would make Randy alone look good and not against the Judgment Day themselves. So, again, I definitely think the Judgment Day wins here. Um, I'm hoping for that at least because that means Randy Orton went heel, and that's what I want. Um, but this is gonna be another fantastic match, regardless. So, um, I definitely feel like uh. We are going to have a great show. Um, I think these War Games matches are good, um, and they've built them up pretty well. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about, you know, having Randy Orton in this match as a good guy when everyone he's teaming with, he would legitimately have reasons to hate. Um, and I think we're going to see a lot of story elements take place in these ga- in these matches tonight. Um, so look out for that. Um, and uh, I think match of the night, um, even with the war games, might be Santos Escobar and uh, Dragon Lee. Uh, they're going to put on an absolute classic. I'm calling it now. Uh, so they're either going to put on a classic or it's going to be like a squash where he just hits him with like a pipe or something. <laughs> just knocks him out before the match and makes him start it anyways. <laughs> But, um, yeah, uh, this is a interesting uh, premium live event. Um, only five matches confirmed so far. Like I said, I think we might get a tag team champion, women's tag team championship match on the pre-show, which would be awesome. Um, but, yeah, until uh, till we know more, this is what we got. And um, I definitely think that this is not going to be as good of an event as uh, last weekend's uh, Full Gear was because Full Gear was amazing. Um, worth every penny of that $50 that I, almost $60 that you got to pay with the taxes and stuff. Um, and this is just with my Peacock membership. So yeah, I, I personally definitely think that we've got, uh, when back to back weeks, we're going to have two good pay-per-views, but only one of them is, can be the best. And I'm going to, at this point, I'm thinking all full gear might reign supreme after this weekend, but we will see, um, survivor series war games starts tonight at, seven with the pre-show and the actual premium live event starts at eight. Uh, check back later to see how I did. Um, hopefully I can make this record a little bit better and we're going to keep going on until, uh, we, until we stop watching wrestling, which will probably be never. I'm really trying to get to, uh, the Royal rumble this year. Uh, it's only a few hours away from me and hopefully I can make some, uh, magic happen and get some tickets and get everything set up so I can go do that. But, um, 
until next time, I just love talking wrestling. So uh, make sure you give us a follow here on Junkie where you can see all this live and join the conversation. Um, if you're watching this now, you're watching it on the replay on YouTube. Uh, and make sure you go check out Junkie. Like I said, it's the new social collecting platform that is going to revolutionize both uh, social media and collecting. I'm your host, Nerd Tween. Uh, I work with the comics division as well as the wrestling division. Um, so make sure you give us a follow. Um, easy to find. Just type in Junkie on either Apple or Android, and you can find it really easy. Until next time, this is Nerd Tween signing off. One, two, three, ding, ding, ding.